Hey, so today I'm looking at the Mito Red Light Laser LED Helmet and the Mito Red Light Pro Laser Helmet. These helmets are not for riding your bikes. So I wouldn't recommend that. No, they're actually for hair regrowth. So both of these helmets are using either lasers or LEDs and they're emitting red light. There's no near infrared light in these helmets. There's not much research at the moment on near infrared light for regenerating hair or slowing male pattern baldness. Instead, it's all around the red light. So that's what these helmets are doing. Now, obviously I have both of them here. What I'm gonna do is run through the key differences the key features and also we're going to fire up the spectrometer see actually how much power is coming from them and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to test one of these for maybe six months so be sure to subscribe to get the follow-up to this video in six months time and hopefully i'll be filming that video with a full head of hair fingers crossed right okay so let's get into the key features and a bit of background knowledge about these products so if you haven't already read our article on red light therapy and hair loss I'll put a link to that below. It's over at the Light Therapy Insiders website. It's really, really good. It uh, goes deep into the science, into the wavelengths, dosing, all that cool stuff. I've also done a video summarizing the key points on this, so go check that out if you haven't. And then while we're on the topic of previous content, I've actually been playing around with the Current Body LED Hair Regrowth product, which is sitting back there on the shelf. Uh, I used that for four months. I've done a follow-up video to that. This is going to be the start of my next experiment. But anyway, what do you need to know from the science? Well, we know that red light therapy works for slowing down hair loss, which I think is what has happened to me over the last few years. But there's also plenty of research showing that red light therapy actually helps regrow hair. Now, if you've watched my current body before and after review video, you may actually see that I think there is some regrowth. I'm not 100% sure. You go check that out. I'm keen to hear your thoughts. But anyway, Forget about me for a while. The research is solid. There is good evidence there showing it is going to help, especially if you get in early. I think I've left mine a little bit too late. So it is what it is. Now, when it comes to optimal wavelengths, typically it's 650 to 660 nanometer light, which is actually what I found in both of these helmets. There is a bit of research showing 620 to 630 is going to be beneficial. From a power output point of view, we're seeing everything from say 3 milliwatts over centimeter squared right up to 90 milliwatts over centimeter squared. It's quite a broad range. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what these are putting out when I test them very soon. Okay, so now let's look at these products in particular. Now, both of them are from the same company. That is Mito Red Light. I've tested a lot of Mito Red Light products over the years, particularly their panels uh, and also some handheld devices. Their products are always really, really good. Great value, great power output, great performance, uh, decent features, and you're also getting good warranty and good support. So I'm looking forward to testing these products. I'm sure they're going to be great as well. Now, why are there two devices? Well, actually, if you head over to the Mito Red Light website and go to their helmet section, you'll see that they actually have three different helmets. They have these two helmets for hair regrowth, and then they also have a product for the brain, for cognitive function. This is their Mito Red Light Mind product. I'm not gonna talk about that today. That will be in another video, so be sure to subscribe if you wanna learn more about that in a future video. Today, we're gonna look at the two hair regrowth products. So the first helmet is the Mito Red Light Laser LED Helmet. Now, this is, again, designed for hair regrowth. It's quite a snug fit but you can actually remove some of these foam pads here and you get a much better fit, which is kind of good because yeah, that it was a little bit painful the first time I put it on, but you can put it on like so. Again, it's just to shine red light on the head. You're not using this as a safety helmet or anything like that. This particular product sells for 495 US dollars. That's at least based on the time of filming. They may have specials going on, prices do change. I have been given a discount code. It is discount code Alex that will save you, I believe, 5%. So it will bring the price down a little bit. Be sure to use that if you are going to purchase one of these. But what do you get for $495 or thereabouts? Well, you get a helmet that's got both LEDs and lasers in it. There are 26 laser diodes and 30 LED chips in it, bringing you a total of 56 light emitting lights. Now, this particular device has a built-in control panel as you can see here it's simply got an on off button with a start and pause button with a timer built in so you can run your 10 15 20 minute session see how much longer you've got left to go then it comes with this power cable so this particular unit 
you need to plug in when you're using it. So pretty much you're gonna be, you are tied to the wall, I guess, when you're using this. But remember, this is only costing you about four, $450. As for the wavelengths, the motor red light states that you're getting about 650 to 660 from the laser chips and about 640 to 660 in the LED chips. I'm gonna go in and test that right now with my spectrometer. Okay, so I'm just using my spectrometer here and you can see first up that the laser is emitting a peak of 652 nanometers. This is the great thing with laser light. It's pretty much straight up and down. Uh, you're getting maybe a bit of energy at 650 through to 652, 53, 54 maybe. But yeah, it's very up and down. All the light's coming around that one particular wavelength, which is good. As for the LEDs, let's have a look at that now. Okay, so here we can see the LED. So you're getting a peak at 660, pretty much bang on, which is good. Uh, and it's a much wider range here. So everything from 644 through to maybe 670, uh, which is pretty much in line with what Mitre had said. Now let's have a look at the radiance figure. So you're paying attention to this number here. Uh, obviously it's gonna be a bit tricky getting an overall reading, but we'll just take some snapshots and see what comes out. Okay, so above this LED, we're seeing about three or four milliwatts. It's nothing special. Uh, let's move over to this LED here. Okay, so above this LED, we're about one or just a little bit under, which is a little bit lower than I expected. So I'm moving around the headset now, just taking various readings. And we're seeing everything from say one to two to three. That's quite low there. Okay, so overall, even though there's lasers in here, you're not getting a ton of light. It's a little bit disappointing. I really thought there was going to be a bit more power out here. I was kind of critical on the current body headset because that was only coming in around three or four milliwatts over centimeter squared it seems to be pretty similar with this mitre red uh base helmet uh, i know when i interviewed michael Chaperio from uh chroma who sells the ironforge his device is quite unique it's putting out a ton of, a ton of power about 150 milliwatts over centimeter squared for instance he said look you're never gonna get LEDs in a plastic case like these helmets are for instance, because if they're done properly and putting out a ton of power, it's just gonna melt the plastic. So I knew it wasn't gonna be radically high numbers, but I thought maybe a 10 or 15. Not that it's a bad thing. Remember that research showed benefits from as little as three milliwatts over centimeter squared. So it's kind of what we're seeing here in this helmet. The good thing is you're getting the right wavelength. So that is great. What I wanna do now is test the professional, the 100% laser product. Okay, so this is the Moto Red Light laser helmet. Uh, this is their pro one. So it retails for $895. It's nearly double the price of their base unit. But with that, you're getting 100% LEDs. There are 162 laser diodes in here compared with a total of, I think about 50 LEDs and lasers in the base one. So you are getting a lot more light. It'll be interesting to see if we're getting a higher irradiance figure here as well. Now the listed wavelength is 650 to 660. So we'll test that soon. The other key difference though, between this one and the base unit is that this is rechargeable, has a built-in battery, so you don't need to be tethered to the wall, which is kind of neat. It comes with this remote with an on-off button and a start pause and a nice timer. It also came with a really good manual. The other one didn't come with a manual. I'm not too sure if it was meant to, but uh, the manual that comes included with this is quite nice. Design-wise, it's very similar. This one is actually a lot larger. Even with the foam padding in here, it fits my head rather well and isn't painful to push on. Uh, again though, I mean, it doesn't really matter how it looks as long as it feels comfortable. And this does feel a lot more comfortable. I should also note that this one is slightly heavier. This weighs 1.8 pounds. The other model was 1.5 pounds. Wearing it on my head right now, it's fine. Like you notice the helmet obviously, but it's no issue. I don't think I'm gonna get a sore neck from wearing this. Okay, let's plug it in, turn it on and uh, test the wavelengths and the radiances. Oh, one thing I should mention as well, both of these helmets actually have a built-in sensor. So it won't work unless it's on your head. All the sensor is doing is detecting a break in the light. So you can trick it by simply putting your hand in there. It's a pretty cool feature that's designed so we don't take it off, look at it and potentially damage our eyes with the lasers. All right, let's get that spectrometer going. All right, so on screen you can see the lasers from the ProVision. 
uh, peaking at what 652, 653, which is good. Again, that is in the optimal range uh, based on the research for hair regrowth. I mean, the downside with the laser though is you aren't getting that wider range. I mean, maybe 655 is slightly better than 650 or 660 is better than 651 but with a laser you're really only getting one or two wavelengths so here we're getting 652 653 so I'm not criticizing it it's just i guess a downside with lasers in this instance there's a lot more laser chips in this product so i am expecting a higher irradiance figure so what i'm going to do is take some measurements where my head would be and let's see what figures we see Okay, so I am getting a bunch of readings. Uh, this particular reading was seven milliwatts over centimeter squared. Move up here, 3.8 here, 1.2, that's right up on the edge on the side. 0.8 again on the, on the outer edges. But in the middle, you're getting about a five to six to seven. It is always tricky measuring lasers because that light is very direct. It doesn't, it doesn't expand out like an LED does, which is why I'm, I always struggle to get decent readings. Uh, but as you can see, we are getting numbers, everything from say one through to seven or eight. So that means there is more power coming from this ProVision compared to the baseline. Still though, I am surprised that the numbers are as low as they are. I really thought we'd be seeing in the teens or maybe even twenties. Is that a problem? Not necessarily from a scientific point of view, because again, we're in the uh, research range, so to speak. However, we're definitely on the lower end of the spectrum. I guess the key thing is though, if you're looking at it purely from a light output point of view, for eight or $900, you could go out and buy a mitre red light panel, like one of their, their mins or a, a smaller tabletop panel for the same amount of money, and you're gonna get a heap more light. Plus that light's gonna be emitting red light and near infrared light, you're gonna get nice coverage and you can also use that panel on other areas of the body. Of course, the great thing about this is you can put it on, do your work, move around the house, do your dishes, whatever, and you've got that convenience factor. Really though, it comes down to what you think is gonna be better, having something with more power and giving up on the convenience side of things, or you're happy with the low amount of power and having the lasers and having the flexibility to walk around with a control panel like this and not having to worry about sitting in line next to a panel for 20 minutes a day. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna test this particular unit, the pro one, the professional one, the one with the more uh, lasers in it. I'm gonna test that for a good four to six months. I'm gonna take some uh, before photos today, use this four to six times a week, maybe in the evenings, and then I'm gonna do a follow-up um, before and after. I'll also compare the after photos with my very initial before photos that I took before using the current body helmet. So be sure to subscribe to see those results. But in the meantime, why don't you check out this video? It's gonna explain a lot more about red light therapy and the benefits it has on hair loss and hair regrowth.